How's it going guys? Hope you're doing great. About a year and a half ago, I made this video demonstrating a DigiSpark with some code on it that I wrote. And I used that on a Windows 10 computer with Windows Defender enabled and everything, um, just a fresh install. And I was able to plug it in and create a reverse shell that would connect back to my Kali Linux computer and then give me full control of, of the Windows 10 computer. Um, and this is something that could be done from anywhere in the world because I used a tunnel to be able to accomplish that. Um, I'm finally going to release a series of videos of how to actually accomplish this. And it's going to be a series because it is a little bit complicated. Um, I tried recording the video yesterday and noticed that it's going to take a lot more uh, explanation to be able to give a thorough, I guess, idea of how it actually works. Um, so make sure that you are subscribed to the channel if you want to learn how to do this and let's dig right in. Before we get into that, a really easy place to get the DigiSpark is just on Amazon. There are several listings available. This, I think this is the listing where I got mine. Um, I actually have several different versions of the Digi DigiSpark, but this is the best value for your money in my opinion. It has, uh, it gives you five for just over 18 bucks, which is under four dollars a piece. Um, which if you want to use them for, you know, I, I have several because I do a lot of coding on my human interface devices, which is what we are going to make this DigiSpark into. Um, so I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below where you can buy these. It'll probably be an affiliate link, just so you know. Go ahead and grab some, set it up as I shown you in this video, and then in a few days when I release the next video about how to actually code this, you'll be prepared. First, a disclaimer. Anything that I teach you on this video or on my channel is only for educational purposes. And you could get in big trouble if you actually use this for accessing a computer that you don't have permission to access. Um, so I, I did all this testing on my own computers. Um, as you saw in the video, I just have them side by side and uh, they weren't connected in any way other than just on the Wi-Fi, of course. But make sure, guys, that if you are going to be testing this on a computer, make sure it's either your computer or that you have permission from someone else to use this on their computer. And they know what is, what's going to happen with it when you plug it in because um, you could get in big trouble. So just make sure that you do that, that you know that. This is for educational purposes only. Hacking without permission is illegal. Please don't get in trouble, guys. Be smart about it. So. First things first, we will need to install the Arduino IDE. And this computer that I'm recording on right now is a fresh Windows install. I just did it and then I set up my uh, recording studio here and that's the only thing I have installed on it. So I wanted to do this so I can show you exactly from start to finish how this works because I hate it when people record tutorials about how to do stuff and they skip steps or they don't show you the setup and you're just like, I don't even know how to get started because I can't. I, I don't know what to do. So I'm going to show you from start to finish how to do this. So you will need the Arduino IDE. I'll give you these links in the description below, but it's just on arduino.cc slash en slash software. And you'll want to install this first one here. Let me go back and just make sure that was clear. So it's down here under downloads. On the right, it says download options. You see my mouse here. It says Windows, Windows 7 and newer. That's what you want to click on, that top one there and then just click just download when you get to this page. And we'll wait for that download for just a second. And all of this code that I have written is in the Arduino IDE because the DigiSpark is essentially a little Arduino board. Um, so once that is downloaded, let's go ahead and install that. In this video, as I install these things, I'm just gonna let it play in real time. Maybe you can follow along in real time if you want to. Um, because it always bothers me when I'm following a tutorial and uh, people are just cruising right along or they fast forward through something. And um, if I'm trying to do it in real time, I have to go back and forth and pause it and that's just really annoying. So if you guys prefer it this way, let me know in the comments. I'll make sure to follow this for my future videos. Otherwise, if you wish that I would just fast forward through installation and stuff, um, let me know that too and I'd be happy to make some changes. Okay, looks like my computer's really kind of having a hard time. This is just a laptop. This isn't even my main computer. I just threw Windows 10 on this real quick so I could do this demonstration. I'm just going to go over here to my um, my downloads folder and we have Arduino 
I'm just gonna launch that again, even though it looks like it's trying to do something in the background. Let's just close that for now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what happens when you try and record a video at the same time um, as you're installing stuff while uh, doing it on a laptop without <laughs> enough resources. Come on, buddy. There we go. Okay, and you wanna click yes. You wanna allow this app to make changes. Of course we do. Okay, so setting it up. I agree. Make sure those are all checked. They should be next install. And so this is just installing our Arduino IDE. So next up, we will need to install our drivers for your DigiSpark to be recognized by the computer. And you can get these drivers at on GitHub. Uh, Digistump is the developer and provider of these drivers. So right here at the top of this page, and I'll put this link in the description also, um, right here down under assets, you can see my mouse here, where it says digistump.drivers.zip. I'm gonna click on that and download that folder right there. Okay, I'm gonna wait for my Arduino to finish installing. Looks like it's still working on it. Okay, <laughs> let's get back to the installation. So, yes, you want to install everything that it prompts you to do. So there's one, two, three prompts that it has pop up. There we go. You, you just want to make sure you accept everything. It uh, puts this Arduino icon here on your desktop and it says completed and then you can go ahead and close out of that. Now I'm going to go to install my drivers. I'm going back to my downloads folder again. Digistump.drivers, right click and let's extract all and extract. So we can extract that zip folder and now here we have our, you see this is, it just um, extracted to another folder right here. Enter into that in my downloads. And then I'm running on a 64-bit computer most of you guys will be running this on a 64-bit uh, operating system. So I'm just going to click on this install drivers right here. You can do it with this DPINST64, but I'm just going to click install drivers, and that should automatically do it. Click yes, and then it opens up another wizard. So next, go ahead and accept everything, all, the, all of its prompts once again. There we go, and then finish. And that should be it for the drivers that we need installed. Now, I'm going to try to proceed without restarting my computer. Uh, if you guys have issues, you might want to restart your computer and just see if that helps you. So next, we are going to set up our Arduino IDE environment. So go ahead and launch Arduino. Um, yes, except uh, private and public networks. At least that's, that's what I do. I'm just doing this at home, so I don't have to worry about that too much. Um, I'm going to expand this window to make it a little bit bigger. And now we need to do some basic setup so that the Arduino environment can recognize. You see down here at the bottom right corner, it says Arduino Uno. So it's just expecting us to be programming in Uno, and that's not right um, because ours is a Digispunk, Digistump Digispark is what it is. So if you click Tools down here in Board, um, you see it doesn't have a DigiSpark available. So we need to tell it where to find those uh, that library. So over here on the DigiStump website, they have their documentation about how to actually connect and program your DigiSpark. Scroll down a little bit, and they have nice little um, demonstrations here, little GIFs of how to actually do this, but I'm just gonna show you in real time. So let's copy this URL right here. And we'll want to go over to Arduino. Up in the top left corner, click on File, go down to Preferences. And right here near the bottom of this window, it says Additional Boards Manager URLs. You'll want to paste what we just copied and click OK. Next, as it shows in this right here, this documentation, you'll want to go and select the proper board. So. We'll go to Tools now in the Arduino IDE. Go down to Board, over to Boards Manager. <clears throat> it's going to update a couple things. 
then I'm going to just type in DigiSpark, D-I-G-I-S-P-A-R-K. Let's search for that. There we go, DigiStump AVR boards. Another option, I think, uh, I think what it tells you to do is to, to click this drop down, go to contributed in case this doesn't pop up, but it did pop up for me. So this DigiStump AVR boards is what I'm going to install. So click install on the right hand side right there. Let it install for just a second. Still working on it. I'm just going to come over here and make sure I'm not missing teaching you guys something. Okay, the rest of it's just a demonstration. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close out of that. And once again, that URL um, will be in my description of the video, so check there for that. Okay, looks like it installed successfully. If I click on it again, it has the option to remove. We don't wanna do that. Um, that just shows, okay, it says green installed right here next to, next to it. So click close. And then I'm going to X out of my Arduino IDE and reopen it just to make sure that it goes, it updates all of that. Now, right here, I have with me my DigiSpark in my hand. And I'm going to test it out just to show you that you can, uh, that it, it should work now. So I'm back in my Arduino IDE. Click on Tools once again. You'll want to go to Board and Now underneath the Arduino AVR boards, which was originally the only thing that would pop up, we have DigiStump AVR boards. You'll want to select the first one that says DigiSpark default 16.5 megahertz. Click on that. And now in the bottom right corner, it says DigiSpark default 16.5 megahertz uh, instead of the Arduino Uno. And that is correct. So um, to make sure that it compiles, I mean, this is an empty sketch, but just so you guys know in the future, because I'll be using it like this a lot, uh, in the top left corner, <clears throat> go ahead and click the check mark, verify, and that just makes sure that your sketch compiles uh, for the selected board. And it says that it's done compiling, so that worked down here at the bottom. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and click this upload button, which is what you'll want to do when you actually want to upload it to your Arduino. Uh, and sorry for those of you guys who are experienced with Arduino. Um, this is just for people who have no idea what they're doing but want to get into this kind of stuff. I'm just trying to walk through. Um, if you appreciate that, make sure you leave a, th a thumbs up on the video. Otherwise, just let me know in the comments and um, I'd be happy to just kind of skip through this stuff a little bit more quickly in the future. Anyway, I'm going to click the upload button. It says down here, compiling sketch, now uploading. Okay, it says plug in device now. We'll time out in 60 seconds. So you'll want to wait until it says that to plug in your DigiSpark. Now I'm plugging it in to my computer. It'll give you a little tone, micronucleus done, thank you. And now you can unplug it. And you'll want to unplug it typically within about five seconds because the DigiSpark has a five second delay built into it. And that's why you can't just really leave it plugged into the computer and then click upload like you can most Arduino boards because it will start executing its code after five seconds. And the reason it has that five second delay is that it waits to see if, basically if it's plugged into the computer trying to uh, write new code to it. So um, I'll show you in a future video how to remove that. That just makes your code execute five seconds faster. Um, it makes it a bit more difficult to actually write new code to it after that if you, if you uh, still want to change the code on it. So um, just let me know in the comments, once again, if you're interested in that, and I'd be happy to make another video about that. But for now, uh, just remember that you need to, before plugging it in, click the upload button and then plug it in and wait for it to say it is done. And then you'll want to eject it because if you don't pull it out within five seconds, it will start running the code that you have on there, um, which right now is nothing. <laughs> so anyway, that is it for the setup. We successfully set it up on a fresh Windows 10 installation and uh, we programmed our first sketch to our DigiSpark. So the next video will be how to actually write the code that I made for the video of how to uh, create a reverse shell from Windows 10. So make sure you guys subscribe to be notified when that comes out. Leave a thumbs up on this video. I'd really appreciate it and it helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Um, once again, guys, remember that this is for education purposes only. Do not uh, use any of this knowledge, this information that I teach you 
for illegal purposes, for hacking without people's permission. Um, you can get in big trouble for that. But thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, make sure you watch in the next couple of days. I'm going to be releasing the next video in this series. And this is going to be several parts long because the code is a little bit com complex. Um, not super complex, but I just want to make sure I explain it thoroughly. So uh, make sure you watch for that. Thanks guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.